Hope everyone is doing well. Hi there, I'm J.P. Dice, and welcome into Beyond the Briefing. This is the place we like to talk airplanes and weather. I'm a meteorologist, airline transport pilot, and a flight instructor, and my passion is helping you stay safe by keeping you out of bad weather. There's a lot of tools out there these days that we can all be using to help us fly safer. Uh, super excited about a new development. Uh, you guys, if you haven't noticed about this new feature on ForeFlight, man, this, this, this totally made my day. Always makes my day when the METAR map updates too. Uh, a lot of marginal and uh, IFR places uh, back there uh, tonight as I'm recording this. So back to the uh, item at hand, our, our business tonight. ForeFlight has an upgrade. Uh, we've talked about this on some of these episodes, uh, cloud layers and where to find the cloud tops, when you're going to be entering the clouds, how long you're going to stay in the clouds, how to figure that out. We've done some of that with skew T's and trying to take the forecast models and uh, figure out where all of this is going to be happening. Well, the folks at ForeFlight, they're going to take some of the pressure off. They have a new tool in their profile view that is going to allow you to do just that. So I'm going to switch over to four flight. Uh, let's plan a trip. So we're going to take my Mooney, November 33 Yankee Zulu, and we're going to leave the Birmingham uh, airport. If I can type that in right. There we go. Birmingham KTYS. And that's McGee Tyson Airport, okay? So that's up in Knoxville. So we're going to go Birmingham to Knoxville, 9,000 feet. So we have a 16-knot uh, tailwind. It's going to take about 13, 14 gallons of gas to get up there. So let's look at the weather. Oh, my goodness. It's kind of rainy up there looking at uh, the weather data. The station model showing marginal and also IFR conditions, but right around Knoxville, uh, much of that area is still VFR. The new feature here, and this is the part that excites me, watch this. I'm going to click Profile View, and there you go. I've got uh, right here in this pull down, you've got airspace, you have icing, turbulence, and notice the new, there's the new feature, clouds and it will show you where you're going to start running into the cloud cover. Now in white, that's clouds, the blue indicating the icing. So we can kind of scroll up and figure out where we could break out of the clouds or fly above the clouds. In the case of this trip, it's not too far. Birmingham to Knoxville is not a trip that we're going to get super high in a piston-powered plane, but let's just say we were in a, in a jet or a turboprop. Just scroll up here on the left-hand side, and notice, even at 15,000 feet, we'll just take it up even a little bit higher here. Say at 19,000 feet, we're still IMC. We're still in the clouds. Now, it looks like we're out of the icing layer, but we're still going to be in the clouds. Let's say we're going to go really high, and we're going to get up to 35,000 feet. Obviously, we're, we're now... Uh, most likely in a uh, turbine airplane, I would imagine, uh, you can see that we're going to be out of the clouds. So it's going to be a pretty thick layer of clouds there that we're looking at. So where, where does ForeFly get all this information? Well, guess what? They're getting it and processing the data just like I was showing you guys. But they're doing it for you. Instead of actually taking the model soundings and you figuring it out, they're doing it here in that profile view. That said... Okay, uh, this is going to be a forecast. This is not an exact cast. So just because it says this doesn't mean you're guaranteed to break out of the clouds at 30,000 feet. That may not be the case. You may actually still be in the clouds, but this gives you a pretty good idea of how thick that cloud layer is. And of course, when we're forecasting uh, very close to the time that we're going to be taking off, it's going to be very accurate. Or you can get a snapshot. And in this case, this is a snapshot happening right now. So that's going to be fairly accurate. So what if you're taking off, say, for instance, uh, tomorrow morning, and you're going to be flying that same trip, Birmingham to McGee Tyson in Knoxville. What do you do? Let's go back over here to edit. We'll click our time tab and we'll go over to Monday. And let's say we're going to be leaving at 2.30 in the afternoon. So there's 2.30 in the afternoon. And we go back over to profile. And that's what we have for tomorrow. Let's make sure that actually took. I know. 
Yeah, that's 2.30, that's 2.30 Monday. So there's our profile view. Uh, looks like that cloud layer is probably not going to be quite as thick, but it actually will show you what's going to happen into the future in at least a little while. Let's, let's take a look at tomorrow morning and say we have a departure that's going to be at 7.30 in the morning. And we'll go back to our altitude that we're supposed to be flying. And there you go. Just readjusting that tomorrow morning it's going to look completely different we're not going to have those thick clouds around Knoxville like we have right now so this could be a tool that you use to look at the weather if you're about to depart or if you're going to be departing in the next several hours or perhaps even uh, the next morning so very very good information on top of that there's also if you haven't already figured this out there's been this layer for a while and that's the turbulence layer and icing. So you have turbulence and icing, and both of those are global products. So very, very good information there. If you're going to be doing uh, any kind of uh, traveling, um, any cross-country type work, you've got that information that's going to help you uh, plan your day. Now, if you're an instrument-rated pilot, you're saying, well, I can fly in the clouds. Not a big deal. But, you know, if you think about it, do any of us really just want to stay IMC for two or three hours? Probably not. Your passengers don't want to do that. They want to see a little bit of sunshine or at least some clearing out there or perhaps not the bumps that are connected with flying in the clouds. So that's a great tool when you're planning your flights is to use that to know, okay, well, I'm going to plan this flight, and I'm going to clear that out. Uh, we're going to plan this flight, and we're going to file for whatever altitude that gets us above this layer. And, and certainly... Something to think about if you've got an icing layer there, you don't want to stay in that, especially if you have some of the uh, ice protection that is in a finite amount. And what I'm talking about is the TKS type systems. You don't want to live in ice with those kind of ice protection systems. That's really used for a, a transition period to get you through some icing, but not to just stay there. Remember, there's only so much in those tanks, so you just don't want to keep running that nonstop. And, and those systems, like uh, many others, can be overwhelmed. We still talk about the heated wings tend to be the, the, uh, the heated surfaces tend to be the, the better ice protection uh, between all of those different type systems, whether it be the TKS or the boots or so forth. Uh, yeah, I like to talk about this because we are heading into that cool season, and especially if you're going to be traveling farther to the north in some of those colder climates, you're going to be running into those freezing layers that are going to be uh, substantially lower. So uh, keep that in mind when you're traveling. If you have a trip, uh, say, up to Illinois or Wisconsin or Minnesota this time of the year, we don't have to worry about that that much if you're going to be heading down farther to the south. But every now and then, depending on the altitudes that you do fly, you can run into some icing, and you can be, uh, of course, right here in the deep south. We have that issue here in Birmingham from time to time, and we can't get very high. I know I can't. Not in my uh, J Model Mooney. It has no ice protection on it, so we have to stay out of that. Uh, so good information there, and I want you to be taking advantage of some of that new data that is available to you on ForeFlight. It is a fantastic electronic flight bag, and I hope uh, you are using uh, weather data in, in all your flying. Uh, I talk to uh, a lot of different pilots out there, and there are some that don't make this a normal part of their flying, a normal part of their practice in the cockpit, and it needs to be. You need to be looking at the weather before you take off and while you're in the plane. Constantly getting those updates and not just uh, checking it out several hours prior and going for it. Weather is something, as I say, is highly perishable. A forecast, certainly an old forecast, is not that valuable. Uh, I know in the TV business, a lot of times somebody will look at the weather uh, that we put on TV on a Monday and they don't watch TV for a few days and they, they pop back in on Thursday and things have have changed quite a bit. New data comes in, things are evolving, and you can have some nuances in weather. We've seen it before where a forecast doesn't turn out the way we have planned and everything else just kind of messes up as a domino. You get low visibility and low ceilings because of maybe the rain lasted longer and you have wet ground and high dew points. So lots of information there. But make sure, again, just to kind of go through this one more time, if you're on four flight, we'll take this up full screen you hit uh, profile, and that is going to show you where the clouds are going to be. In this case, there aren't many clouds. Let me set it up where you're going to be looking at more clouds out there, and we'll just take it right now. 
And I know there's going to be clouds between Birmingham and Knoxville because there's some rain up that way. Look at the cloud layer. So if you were at 8,000 feet, and if we're going to be at the right altitude for the direction of flight, that would be 9,000 feet or 7,000 feet, you would be in the clouds. You would be in instrument conditions heading on in there and uh, through your descent. So it would be dark, it would be cloudy, and it would be rainy. Hopefully, this helps you out in your flight planning. I love talking to you guys about aviation weather. And make sure, if you like this little program that we do here on YouTube, uh, subscribe on it, share it with others, click the uh, little bell and the like button. We would love to hear from you as well. I'm J.P. Dice, right here in Birmingham, Alabama, and this is Beyond the Briefing.